How many times have I said literally during this? Not that many. Uh... I'm trying to be cognizant of it. Not as many. Because apparently I say literally a lot. I don't know. Hey everyone, this week I'm doing a Q&A video and I actually haven't read any of your questions yet because my producer Laura wouldn't let me. So we're all gonna hear them for the first time. Um, thank you so much for sending them in and the voice you're gonna hear off camera is gonna be her asking me your guys' questions. So here we go. So was acting something you learned or something that you came naturally or a little bit of both? Acting was something that I fell into. I grew up in a small town in Jersey and um, there wasn't really a, acting wasn't part of my world. My father was an orthopedic surgeon. My mother was um, a gourmet home chef and um, acting just wasn't ever part of my thing. And I'm the youngest of five kids. And one of my, my eldest sister actually, her name is Stephanie. Um, she's 10 years older than me and she was working at Glamour Magazine in New York. Cause in Jersey, we were like half an hour from the city. And I've always been tall. I, I was always really tall. Um, and she was like, why don't you, have you ever thought about modeling? And I was like, what? it was literally like the craziest thing I'd ever heard of. And I'm like, no, why would I, why, why would I ever want to do that? Even when my mother tried to do like photo shoots of like the kids, I, there was one time where she tried to put me in a dress and I was just crying the whole time. And she took pictures of us and just despite me, those are still in our family photo album. It's me in a dress just sobbing because I hated this stuff. <laughs> so I was like, no, I don't want to model. So then she convinced me to do it. My mom was really into the idea and I went in and I had a meeting in New York. We literally pulled pictures from the family photo album of me like, you know, on my my grandmother lights going on cruises every year. So there was one cruise we did where we pulled pictures from this like cruise and I went in um, and I handed them to, to an agency and they looked at the pictures, they looked at me and they were like, okay, great. And they wanted to sign me, but they said, but first you have to lose 25 pounds. And I had never had attention on my body before. I'd never even thought about that. I was very into sports. I was horseback riding. I was playing basketball. It was like, you know, sporty. How old were you? Um, 15. And then I had never had attention on my body and I walked out and my mother had driven me to this meeting and I walk out crying and she's like, what, what did they say to you, you know? And I was like, they said I need to lose 25 pounds. <laughs> yeah, cause I'd never, it was so weird to me hearing that. And uh, just cause I'd never had attention on it. You know what I mean? And my mom's like, okay, so what are you gonna do? And I'm like, I'm gonna lose 25 pounds. <laughs> then now I'm like, it was a challenge. So in two months, I dropped down to the measurements that they wanted me to. Um, my mom like started making me all this like crazy, amazing food, like super healthy, whatever. And I got like, I was already really active. And then they sent me to Milan. So then I moved to Milan and when I was 15, I lived in, I lived in Italy for pretty much a year. Um, and then I lived in uh, France um, and I, Germany for a little bit. And I got, to, and I lived there by myself. And um, my mom sent me over there, we're very unorthodox. And uh, I didn't like modeling at all. So I ended up, this casting came in through my Italian modeling agency for um, an Uncle Ben's rice commercial. So I ended up booking it. And it was literally me walking through the piazza of the Duomo. How that sold rice, I have no idea. Were you like wearing a coat and walking through the Duomo? Yes. Yeah, I have the commercial. Yeah, you found we're right it? there. Yeah, we're gonna like totally. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> Is that me? Yeah. Wait, let me see. We'll, we'll spin it around. <laughs> we'll spin it around. Whatever. We'll watch it after. Wait, oh I want to get your reaction so to it. I've never seen it. Um, I've never seen it. So you've never seen the rice I've commercial? I've never seen it. No. Are we rolling? Yeah. Okay, good. So you've never seen the rice commercial? No, I've never seen it. Can we play it for you right now? Sure. Paris, Welthauptstadt für Mode und Trends. Is that me? Oh my God, I think, dude, that's it. 
knusperleichte Reissnacks in vielen leckeren Sorten. Ein Trend setzt sich fort. Oh my god, I don't even remember that. I don't even remember that. That is crazy. Girl, oh my god, that is so... What is with the hair? I don't remember that. Oh my god, that is so funny. Okay, so that was my start in acting. <laughs> was that? Wow. Does that bring back any weird memories? Well, no, it just, the main thing is it brings back memories of me like living there because they, I knew the city so well that I didn't even need a map after a while. I knew the, I knew the subway so well. I know them way better than New York City. And my apartment, when you first go over, you they put you in like a model apartment um, with like a bunch of girls. And that was not my bag. I already, the modeling thing was already like weird for me and living with all these girls, like I have three older sisters, but this was very different. It was very like, my sisters are cool. <laughs> this was like, I just felt very out of place. And I'm like, I, I don't really belong here. So I begged my mother to help me get my own apartment until I could afford to pay her back. And so I got my own apartment and I was like, Oh, there were like cockroaches everywhere. And when I would go to the bathroom, I would have to, I would, I would call my mother in Jersey because I was so scared. Cause I'm like, I'm like, there's a lot of cockroaches. <laughs> and, um, and she's like, when you go to the bathroom, look away when you flip the light on because they don't like light and they'll scatter. And I just, I just remember all, like all these crazy memories. Cause I was there, you know, alone, you know, but that, uh, was my first little taste of acting. So I came back to Jersey. I was I was in Europe for a total of a year and a half, probably. Came back to Jersey when I was around 17. And my mom's like, okay, so what do we do? And I'm like, Grant, give, this is a small town of Jersey, but this is really not our bag. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I think, I guess I need to learn how to act. So we literally opened up the yellow pages with the big book of the yellow pages, opens it up and just blindly chose someone in New York City, an acting coach. So I start acting in New York, which is like a whole crazy different world. I'm like, this is, it was very odd. To, the whole thing was very odd to me. And um, this guy who was that part of my modeling got me an audition for an MCI commercial. My first audition I ever went on in the States and I booked it. And they were, and it, back then it was a national commercial. It's very different now. Back then when you get a national commercial, you make some pretty good, you know, money and, and, so they were all very happy <laughs> that I booked this. Then they started really sending me out on a bunch of acting stuff. And within a year, I get this audition for that 70s show. And um, it was not called, it was called The Kids Are All Right back then. And what's funny is when they were doing all the, the screenings for the show, nobody could ever remember the name of it. And they were like, oh, we like um, that, that 70s show. And it's just kind of stuck. So then we're just, they were just like, let's just call it that, that 70s show. But then I ended up booking that. And then when I was just about 18, I moved to Los Angeles to start filming that 70s show. You had to have a lot of different hair colors for different jobs. What's your favorite? You know, I like the dark. I feel, you know, it's funny because also for you actors out there, um, I'm a natural redhead. But what's funny is when I was a redhead, I never like made sense to people. I, you know, I'm tall with like a deep voice and, and it, it which is already like kind of different. And then with the red hair, you're like this rare thing and people don't like to mess with red hair. If you have red hair, nobody could ever think it could be a different color. So it kind of puts you in this category. Um, and someone like Adana Pinciotti was perfect for me um, because, you know, Donna was, my role on that 70s show and that was perfect for me because she was a very at like outside of the box type of character and um and she was the perfect kind of character for me to play because she was so different and then you know I would when I was a kid I would audition for these like you know teen comedies or whatever and I would never book them and I would lose it to you know you know I, I've literally gotten letters or like emails or whatever um from casting directors being like, you were, I I swear to God, she, this one in particular, she was like, you were the best actor for the role. 
but you just didn't look the part. And I'm like, what is that even? Now I know that that it could be anything. You know, from directing, sometimes someone just has a certain quality, and sometimes if it's a specific quality, you got to go with it. You know, um, especially on our show, if we do flashbacks and stuff, if there's two actresses that are wonderful, but they look similar to if they're playing a younger version of one of the characters, sometimes you have to go with the you know the one that play that looks more similar, but. So when I was a kid, when I read hair, it was like, you're in this little box. I find that with the dark brown hair, I make sense to people because with my personality and everything, I just, people are like, they, they're like, okay, this makes sense now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which has been really um, interesting and enlightening as an actor too, to be like, wow, that is so weird you know, we work in this industry of like ideas and all this stuff. And you think that people can kind of make the job where, if, oh, she's right here. She can also have brown hair. But um, it's very odd. People like knowing where they can put you. And it's a very interesting thing. And it's a, it's a detriment also, I think, to actors or directors or anybody, you know, when you work with people who are very open-minded, it's awesome because those things kind of go out the window and then it's just about the work, you know, but right now I'm, I'm okay with the dark brown hair. It's fine. I also am currently still Alex, so I don't have a choice. Um, and I'm fine with that. Do you think you're going to keep it after you finish shooting? I don't know. I actually, I don't even know. I mean, we just started season seven, so I'm not, I actually don't really know what I'm going to do after. I might go back to, I might just go back to red, honestly, because Every two weeks, I have to get my hair dyed because my red roots start peeking through, and it's pretty annoying. So I might just go back to red just to make my life easier, <laughs> truthfully. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. We're going to cut this up in a few different videos. So subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can know when we post a new one. And thanks so much for watching, and see you guys next time.